So this is a very large golden egg, probably the size of an of an ostrich egg, um, and um, we've we've called it developing a portfolio of policies and interventions to support pastoralists and rangelands. So um, I'm presenting this on behalf of a number of, of, um, of uh, researchers um, in, engaged in the environment flagship, some of whom are in the room with us today. And so I will direct all difficult questions to them. Um, but let's start with the challenge. Um, so we really wanted to try to identify entry points to do two um, parallel um, sorts of work. The first is all of the work that we've been doing for over a decade to increase the risk so we've been doing a, over a decade of work to increase the risk management capacity of pastoralists, but we're continually through that agenda looking for additional entry points, additional ways to accelerate the investment um, and to crowd in investment opportunities. And then at the same time, um, since many of you are livestock experts um, and you know that, it, that livestock are only as productive as the feed and fodder base. And when we talk about extensive pastoral systems, that really depends upon improved management of the rangelands. So we've got this lovely schematic here that Marae has helped us to develop um, with this beautiful woman and her animals here in, in the middle. So um, you'll see that the yellow, anything in yellow is the direct sorts of interventions um, that we made just directly support pastoralists. But then equally important are these reddish, um, is the red ring around the yellow space, which is policy support um, that we also had to engage in um, to ensure that pastoralists continue to have access. So let's start with the sustainable rangeland management practices, which Munir, Jason, Fiona, Lance, um, and many other partners uh, have been working with us on to try to restore and better manage rangelands. But that uh, abil the ability for pastoralists to have access to uh, those rangeland management practices depends upon us doing policy engagement and development with our partners to ensure that pastoralists are included in land use planning processes. And part of that um, that's been really important has been a recent innovation, our, our um, Global Rangelands Atlas, which I hope some of you have seen the media campaign about, um, so that at the global level, we're convincing um, donors and investors um, that rangelands can be part of the, of the, of the solution. Uh, similar to the work that we did around sustainable rangeland management practices is some of the more process oriented work, um, for example, the joint village land use planning that we've engaged in. Please mute in Tanzania um, to ensure that pastoralists can secure grazing rights. Uh, we've also done similar work in Kenya um, and in Ethiopia with slightly different names. So that's sort of the rangelands management side of things. Can you also stop moving your mouse so that I can move mine? Thank you. Um, so then on the risk management side, uh, we start with um, the work that we've done on risk management options um, to make sure that pastoralists, um, sorry, identifying risk management options so that pastoralists um, uh, through innovative financing to help pastoralists increase their resilience to climate shocks and innovation that has been spawned by that early work around index based insurance has been um, has now been work on digital information sharing platforms to help pastoralists, um, but to increase both our knowledge and theirs about how they manage climate and other kinds of risks. This has also required policy engagement um, to create the enabling environment for drought risk financing. And both of these two sides of the packages have required continued global engagement to ensure that rangelands are included in global development and investment plans. Um, and I don't have space and time for it here, but we have a growing number of outcomes that we're documenting um, to show that we're creating impact. And with that, I will close and apologies for the interruptions and my stumbling. Thanks very much. Thanks a lot, Polly. That's great. And yeah, again, sorry for some of the, the uh, uh, cursor moving. I didn't realize you could see that because I'm trying to get some people who had wanted to go into other groups. Okay, uh, so sorry. yeah, yeah, no, no, it's there's, I mean, it's nothing we can do. Uh, it's technology. So great. Uh, really, really interesting. Are there any comments? I think uh, we have one question for reflection that we'd like to hear from everybody. And uh, if anyone has a quick question to uh, to Polly, they can put it into the group chat and we can, uh, she can answer that. But let's hear from everybody. And uh, you and I think uh, if you can put into the, the group chat, the question, where and how can you see uh, in environmental advances, particularly uh, in the rangelands uh, being widely applied? So 
put your comments or reflections into the chat. Let's see what people say. I will move back to the a very nice graphic. Uh, what about West Africa, Polly? Do you want to say anything about West Africa? Yeah, great. Thanks, Isabel. That's really exciting. Um, and so we have already started applying um, uh, both um, sides of this of this innovation into um, in West Africa. First, um, over the last, uh, it's probably been about 12, 12 months, but a bit longer in that in terms of developing it, we've done some feasibility studies for the index-based insurance and the drought risk financing work um, in four countries in the Sahel. Um, we've, um, uh, we've also um, just more recently gotten engaged um, uh, in, in, in Mali um, in some rangeland restoration work. Um, we did some previous work uh, in Burkina Faso, um, and we're hopeful um, that there's, um, with this renewed interest from, from some of the donors in, um, in looking at securing land rights um, and understanding um, land tenure dynamics across the Sahel, so a lot of donors now are talking about the Sahel as as that one geographical region going all the way from Senegal through to Sudan. So we're excited about that. I don't know if Fiona or if Fiona is here or, or Rupsha, they could also maybe comment on that. Yeah, I see Fiona, Fiona is here. Fiona, I can, can say something quickly. I, I can comment briefly. I'm actually in the car, so I'll comment now whilst I'm not driving. Um, which A real is, pest uh, <laughs> Um, just, just to add to what Polly said, um, where actually uh, we got some last minute funds from UNEP um, to do a scoping of the potential of participatory rangeland management in Mali and Senegal. So that is currently underway at the moment. Excellent. Okay. Uh, not too many other comments here, but again, this is really uh, security. So there's issues of security in, the, in, these, issue, in these areas. Uh, and how do these take into account? Yeah, it's about that's um, kind of the new new agenda that a number of donors are asking us to to, to look at. Um, so we're we're involved in an FCDO funded project called uh, Sporting Pastoralism and Agriculture in Situations of Protracted Crisis, um, and they really want us to understand how all kind uh, want us to really look at quite critically over over a four year period how different innovations um, are either attuned to or missing. Um, the need to treat, to, to, to deal with all kinds of um, security and conflict issues pertaining to use of natural resources, pertaining to the exacerbating impacts of climate change. Um, a, a lot of interest, for example, in looking at drought risk financing in situations of conflicts. Uh, Nathan also has another, another project um, on that. Um, this very interesting question from Tyrell, because this, this is a gap. So this is a gap, investors. Everybody wants to understand the impact, but it's very difficult to get investors to fund those kinds of impact studies. Um, Nathan, Lance, Fiona, Jason, all of us have been have been have been trying really hard, um, and um, we know that they have impact. But actually, doing um, independent, rigorous impact assessments of the type that Isabel was mentioning yesterday um, is is hard work, and um, and I think that's a that's a that's a that's an area where we could use some more investment. Thanks. And and Polly, we of course mm -hmm. we are doing uh, spending eighty thousand uh, dollars on a in the completely independent in participatory impact assessment of PRM piloting in Kenya and Tanzania right at this moment. Excellent, thanks, thanks, thanks Fiona. Okay, I think with that we should probably move on, and we can we'll have some more questions later on as well, some more opportunities for that. So thank you, Polly, and. Keep on typing. If there's more questions and discussion that come up, please use the chat because that's a really nice way to keep uh, things going. So thank you, Polly. With that, let's move to the next uh, presentation. So no such thing as waste for feed crops for people and livestock. And this will be done by uh, uh, Miguel Sanchez Garcia. Uh, yeah. So I'll hand it over to you. Thank you. 